Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lara or Lara Likes Mascara. Today I'm doing my project pan video, which I'm very, very excited about. And yeah, I have a couple of empties. I have a couple of new roll-ins. I have some exciting things to show. So let's just get into it. Let's get into the empties first. So I know that some people like to sort of tease the exciting part and then not show them until the end but I think for me it makes more sense to just sort of get them out of the way so I can show what else I'm working with so this is an empty this is the ordinary buffet multi-technology peptide serum and this I have had for over a year so it has definitely passed its expiration date I still felt like it was fine it definitely wasn't harming my skin but I was kind of just pushing myself to finish it because of you know how long I had had it. I actually didn't realize when I got it that this was only good for 12 months. Maybe that's like a long time with serums, but to me that doesn't seem like a super long time for a non-essential skincare product. Like for moisturizers, sunscreens, and face washes, I'm definitely going through those more quickly than, you know, 12 months. But with this, I did take a couple of months off using all serums just because I felt like they were actually making my skin worse. And so, yeah, when I came back to this, I was like, oh, wait, <laughs> like we're already almost at the point in time when I should stop using this. So I think because of that, for me, I'm not really going to buy serums in the future. I am glad that I got the couple that I did just to like try them out. But yeah, I think a, a skincare product that I don't reach for every day, you only have a year to work through that's not enough time for me. And maybe you're like, what the heck, I worked through this in a month or two. I guess that's just not how I use products. And I'm just talking about my experience personally here. The next one, okay, this is not actually an empty. This is a declutter, but I just decided to declutter it yesterday. I was making really good headway on it, but I just couldn't. Like, I just, I can't reach for this anymore. This is the L'Oreal Collection Privé by Julianne Lipstick. Nice packaging. But the color is just not for me. This may seem like it's more of a nudie pink, but it was still too bright of a pink for me. Can you see that there? And the smell is very cloying. It's very thick. It feels thick on the lips. And it's weird. With some lip products, I feel like after I've been using them for too long, I they start to kind of like make me nauseous. Not because they're like actually disgusting products with like disgusting smells but i remember this happened with a uh, mac lip gloss i had i just felt like nauseous whenever i used it so when it reaches that point i'm like okay it's time to say bye bye i did make a lot of headway as you can see you can compare it to the last time but when i compared this to what it looked like last time because i felt like i feel like i use this almost every day multiple times a day but considering that it took that long to get that much use out of it this would take me probably just over two more months and i just when i think about using this for two more months i'm like oh my god i can't do it i was really on the fence about decluttering this for the past like week or so but it's going it's it's saying goodbye i'm also wearing a pink lip product today this is big for me but i thought it would be fun i know some people do like lip, pink lip products so i decided i would try it out i definitely like this look better than this but yeah let me know what you think of pink lip colors because i know that that's People definitely have differing opinions on that. So those are the two that are exiting my collection for this month. So two, not terrible. And now let's move on to the other products and how much use I got out of them. There's definitely some construction going on outside as I'm filming on a weekday, uh, but hopefully you can't hear that on the mic. So this, I think this has been in the project for the longest or like is one of the longest product. This is the NYC bronzer in Sunny. As you can see, this is breaking. I'll have to show like a different close up, but yeah, it's not like I did anything, but it just seems to be breaking, which makes it a lot more difficult to use. You can't really, the way that I have found to use it is to just sort of use the butt of my bronzer brush and break it up and then kind of swirl it all on using the little like chunks. It's almost like a like a loose powder bronzer. Is that a thing? Are there loose powder bronzers? Anyways, it, it works fine, but this is going to be gone by the next time. Mark my words, I'm gonna be finished it by the next update, which is very exciting because I had this for too long. Haven't we heard that before? Definitely made a lot of progress since last time in part because of the product kind of breaking, but also I've just been working hard on it. 
This is the 17 Brows That Brow Kit. I only have that shade left and as you can see I've really worked that down but because this is an eyeshadow shade essentially I use it on my brow bone and inner corner but eyeshadows obviously take a long time to work through because you're not putting them like everywhere in your face it's in very concentrated regions and so because of that it's taking a long time so I think I'll be able to finish this by the end of 2022 but probably not before then this next one is a brown liner that I have slowly but surely been working through so let's look at the progress you can see that lowest mark there that I definitely have worked this down a bit but it's so slow that you know like looking at how much progress I've made since I pulled this in many many months ago it'll probably be two years <laughs> before I actually work this out which is crazy let's say one year I don't think I'll be done this by the end of the year but I'm working through it unfortunately i think that this has changed a bit it, it it's feeling a bit drier and it's more difficult to sort of get color out i have to press a bit harder oh no it looks normal in the back of my hand which i don't love if it continues along that route obviously i will discontinue using it because i don't want to be like jabbing my <laughs> eye line with something super dry but yeah just a basic brown liner i use this fairly frequently. I would say I use this more than black liner, especially in the spring and summer months. And then the last product that I've had there since before 2022, so these were sort of rollovers from 2021, is this CoverGirl Naturelux Mousse Mascara. I've been using this as a brow gel, which I am still very much enjoying using. And I think you can see some, well, I think you can see some of the color on the brush, which says that you know, the product is getting used up, but very slowly. I don't use this on my lashes anymore, just on my brows, but I have been loving, you know, how that looks. So gonna keep using that until it's done. Some other products that I think all of these ones I introduced in the most recent Project Pan video, or maybe the one before that. This is the Becca Duo, the Ever Matte Poreless Priming Perfector, and the Ever Matte Shine Proof Foundation. It's funny because I actually did finish a foundation recently, but it wasn't the foundation that was in my project pan, which I actually thought it was. I thought that I had that foundation in this project pan. I was like, ooh, yay, another empty for the project, but alas, no. So this primer actually did not get very much use out of the last little while. At the end of my last project pan video, I actually predicted what I would have finished by this time. And one of them was this foundation and another product that I am about to show. And I'm gonna blame not finishing these products on a challenge that I did for YouTube. So if you haven't seen, I did a 30 day minimalist makeup challenge where I was only allowed to use one product per category. Unfortunately, I was not able to finish this. I can't really tell how much is left. It doesn't feel like there's very much left because I have to like really squeeze it to get stuff out. But at the same time, it just keeps coming. So I don't know. And that's getting kind of frustrating because I'm kind of getting to the end of my rope with this. It is just too matte and too high coverage. And for the last like year or so of my use of this, not that I was using it that frequently, but whenever I used it, I would always use it in conjunction with another foundation that was far thinner, far, it had far less coverage. And so that worked together to, you know, kind of find a middle zone. And now when I use this by itself, I really don't find that I like it. It's just too thick. Part of it is probably that I have had it a while, so maybe that's changed the consistency or something, but I'm really just looking forward to getting this finished. Although it does work well in conjunction with other foundations, but because I'm trying to finish this off, I don't tend to use it with other foundations. I use it by itself. Anyways, and then this really doesn't work well with the sunscreen that I have been using lately. So <laughs> this is the Ordinary Sunscreen SPF 30. This is good for a, an inexpensive option. I wouldn't recommend it over other sunscreens, but I just picked it up because it was easy and inexpensive. It's very, very mattifying. It does leave a bit of a white cast and it really does not work with this. I find that when I use these together, it just like removes both products. Like they, they both literally fully calm off your face. It's, it's a very strange situation. And so I can use this when I use my other sunscreen, my, what's it called? Glow screen 
you know what I'm talking about, but I can't use it with this. And so as a result of that, I didn't get very much use out of this, but hopefully I will in the coming months because I will be using that other sunscreen a lot more. I have decided because I just want to get this out. So I'm switching up my sunscreen because of this product. And then the product that I predicted I would finish in my last project pan video is these shimmer sheets. And I'm gonna blame not having finished them on this challenge that I did. So if you haven't seen, I will link it here. I did a 30 day makeup challenge where I could only use one product per category for the duration of a month. And I didn't choose this product. And so I have not used this very much in the last little while. If you haven't seen, these are some shimmer sheets. So I've used half of it, as you can see. I find that that is enough. I don't love these. I'm just trying to get through them. And I thought that it would be fairly easy because there's only 20 of them. So I guess that works out to 40 days if I use each sheet for two uses. But if I'm only using these two or three days a week max, then 40 uses. I don't feel like doing that math now, but I will pop it up on the screen when I do do it. So. Yeah, these are taking a lot longer than I anticipated. Maybe I will have them finished by next time. I really hope that I am. So if you've been counting, you probably haven't. The final product that I did not finish this month is the Ordinary Niacinamide Serum. Yes, this is another serum. I actually introduced these together in my previous video, but I finished the Buffet Serum first because I had worked through more of that prior. I liked it better than the Niacinamide. And I've just heard that you can use that like daily, whereas the niacinamide, I don't use it daily. This has very, very little left. So it's just a question of like making sure that I reach for it a couple times or a couple times a week. I bought it at the same time as the Buffet Serum. So this is probably <laughs> past its best before date, but it's fine. I'm not finding any issues with my skin. I just kind of want to get it out. Same as the Buffet Serum. On that note, let's introduce the two products that I'm bringing in this round because I brought two out. So another ordinary product. I'm just trying to get all my serums out. Can you tell? I'm like, I'm past, I'm past serums. I'm over them, but also I kind of got them at similar times. Well, I got this a couple months after the other two. So it's good for a bit longer, but it's probably still past its best before date. So I just want to get them all out. This is the Marine Hyaluronics. This is definitely thinner than the other two. The other two are quite thick, but this is very liquidy. And I actually really like this one. Again, I don't really know if it does anything, but I think I like this the best of the three when I was using them all regularly. I don't know though, but again, there's not very much left in this. So with both of these, I should have them finished within two or three weeks and then I can just get them out, which is the goal. And the final product that I am bringing in is this NYX Milk eye pencil. So this has actually gotten popular again. This used to be popular way long ago and I'm embarrassed to admit that I got it way long ago, but it's fine. So that's what it looks like. I use this as an eyelid primer and some people find that they, if they use this under like shimmers or, or even like pastel colors, then it makes them pop more than just a regular eyelid primer does. I actually don't really find that this makes much of a difference at all because I, I blend it out fully, right? So well, let me show you. So I'm blending this out on my hand. There you go. So like, yes, it's a bit more white, but not enough that it really makes a difference on the eyelids. So I don't find it makes a difference. So I just kind of want to finish this up because I've had it for so long. So let's make a mark on this paper to show how much I've used of it, and then we can compare it to next time. Oh, well, that's gonna be hard because it's white, but can you see that at all? That's where we are now. So yeah, oh, kind of messed it up. Okay. I realized while editing this that I completely forgot to mention the Lacenza lip gloss that is in my project pan. So I think that speaks to how little I used it these past two months. Not at all. Okay, let's do a quick predictions roundup of what I will have finished by my next update. So that will be at the beginning of July, two months from now. What do I think I can finish within the next two months? Let's discuss. Again, these shimmer sheets, I'm really hoping that if I am diligent and, you know, really work through them, I will be able to use them up. I would estimate at about 12 uses a month, if that's three times a week. And hopefully I have about half of them left, maybe fewer than half. 
<laughs> I could finish this in a month if I really try my hardest. This bronzer, I'm gonna say it, it's gonna be done for next time, okay? Let's manifest it. I, yeah, I think I can do it, especially compared to what it looked like two months ago. I think I can definitely finish this for next time. Also this foundation, I mean, again, I really don't know how much is in there, but it doesn't feel like much. So I'm gonna say I will have this done in two months. And both of these serums from The Ordinary, the Niacinamide and the Marine Hyaluronics, I'm gonna say that I will have finished both of these by July. So that would be one, two, three, four, five. That would be five empties, which is pretty impressive. I mean, I've, I've had five empties in one update before. It's not unforeseen for me, but it is still pretty high achieving. Of course, it is easier to finish skincare products than makeup. I have found so maybe that's not as huge a feat as you know finishing five makeup products would be but still three is is still quite a lot also i'm going to do an update on my what i finished in 2022 video because i made a video just before 2022 talking about all the products that i wanted to finish over the course of this year and i want to do an update and see how I'm doing on that because I wanted to finish 22 in 2022 and I don't think I'm anywhere near that. But you know, if I finish these three, that will get me part way to my goal. And I, yeah, just kind of want to evaluate because I don't even know how many, how many products I've finished from that original goal list. So that's going to be all for my project pan related stuff. And now let's talk about a book that I have been reading lately. Okay. We are not having good luck with this camera today. I think the solve here is to get a new camera because this one is not for filming. Like it's my partner's camera and he just lets me use it for filming, but that's not what it's made for. So I have a lot of issues around that. There's also no like screen that you can flip out. So I have no idea when it's actually filming, when I'm in focus, any of that. So often what happens is I will film myself talking. I'll go back and, and check it and it, it won't have filmed, which is just ha like I was just talking for five minutes and all gone so it would save a lot of time if i had a different camera but it you know would be a significant cost and i really do like the quality of this camera anyways i'll stop rattling on let's talk about the book i will try to say exactly what i just said but again so this is notes from a young black chef by kwame onwachi Interestingly, I've been reading a lot of audiobooks lately. I think almost as many audiobooks as physical books, which never used to be the case. I don't know if I'm just reading more, like the physical books I'm reading are more dense now, so they take longer and I'm reading shorter audiobooks. I think part of it is that I used to listen to a lot of podcasts, but now a lot of my podcasts are either like on breaks, like it's between seasons or they <laughs> stopped recording unfortunately but it does mean i read more audiobooks so kind of a toss-up anyways listen to this one as an audiobook so you may have heard of him from top chef he was a pretty famous well is a pretty famous chef in the u.s from what i understand i do not keep up at all with chefs or like that scene i've never watched any kind of cooking show top chef gordon ramsay like i not familiar with it at all so it was kind of a whole other world though i have of course like read some books some memoirs about cooking so he charts the story of his life he grew up in nigeria and in the us he always wanted to be a chef his mother owned a catering business and she really taught him a lot he ended up going to a very prestigious cooking school which i don't remember what it's called but you know, it's important. It's um, pretty famous, apparently. I don't really know anything about fine dining, that whole area. It's a little bit elitist for me. I'm not really a huge fan, but I did find it really interesting to learn about it and about the restaurant scene and what goes on. So it's it was super interesting. Also because he really had an interesting career trajectory. He had some rough patches that he was able to overcome. Yeah, it just sort of shows that like we all are kind of told that after high school, you just have to like go straight one route. And that's not actually how it works out for most of us. I feel like even I like I'm early on in my career, but I, I've changed. I really changed what I want to do in the future. Not that I know what I want to do, but I know what I don't want to do anymore, which I previously thought that I wanted to do. So interesting read. And yeah, I would overall recommend it. That's going to be it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Apologies for all of my complaints and rants about my camera troubles. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.
I am crossing my fingers that everything continues well today because I just had a mini camera fiasco. I am not good with cameras. I could not care less about learning about like the settings and the aperture and the shutter speed on this thing. I just want it to do what I need it to do. I want one setting and that's it. I don't need all the fancy bells and whistles. Sorry, this may seem like I am yelling at you. I am not yelling at you. I just want things to be simple and I feel like with cameras they're unnecessarily difficult you know like <laughs> i'm filming youtube videos in my room i need this for one setting and um i don't think that they make cameras for that which is kind of strange because there's so many freaking content creators and youtubers out there many of whom basically only use cameras for one thing which is sitting down in the same place and taking a video and talking about makeup or games or books or whatever you know like these people are not cinematographers. We're going on a bit of a rant here, but anyways, I am glad that everything worked out and hopefully the video you are watching right now is all good.